Good afternoon, Saints. I wanted to get on here and make a little, a little tidbit for the shorts. Um, we had a wonderful live, and there is some wonderful information on there. Please share if you can. Um, you know that your body is the home of the Holy Spirit, that you are the throne room of God. Um, the Holy Spirit is in you. You are the th throne room, and the devil hates that. The devil hates your body, and he's going to try to make you think um, that you don't like yourself. He's going to make you think give you thoughts that say you are ugly, um, the color of your eyes isn't right, things like that. Those are not your thoughts. Those are the devil's thoughts, and he is doing everything he can to try to um, try to kill, steal, and destroy you, and he's not a spiritual. He can't hear your thoughts. He can put thoughts in your mind, but he cannot hear your thoughts, so you need to be sneaky in the spirit. So you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. God's, God's Spirit is in you, and the devil is going to do everything he can to try to bring you down. He wants to destroy you, but you are not going to let that happen. You have to be sneaky in the Spirit. You, um, Even if you feel it, you do not say it. If you feel like you're not going to make it through the day, you're not going to make it through doing what God has called you to do, do not say it. Continue doing it. Don't speak your feelings. Um, speak the opposite of what you feel. If you feel angry with someone, speak, I love them. <clears throat> my family, oh, I love my family. My family is amazing. Thank you, Lord, for bringing revival to my home. Speak the opposite. Um, you have rivers of living water inside of you, flowing out of you. So every thought that you have that is not of God, that does not line up with God's Word, you take that thought captive by the Word of God and bring it into into um, the knowledge of Christ. Bring it into God's Word. Um, bring it into um, alignment with God's Word. And that way you will know what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Um, not God has given us um, tools to be able to walk in the Spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. He's given us tools to be able to um, be able to uh, forgive, to walk in the supernatural, to walk in the anointing. Those tools are the Word of God, tongues, speaking in tongues. That is our spirit praying utterances that when we don't know what to pray, the Spirit prays for us when we are in the will of God. And those are the prayers that Jesus, that God says amen to. Those are the prayers that God answers. Um, it is entrance into God in access to the Trinitarian fellowship. So you're actually fellowshipping with God and Jesus in fellowship with the Holy Spirit throughout the day. Um, when you're speaking in tongues and you're praying without ceasing, um, it's fellowship into love, delight, pleasure. You actually have, um, have joy unspeakable, fullness of glory, um, you have uh, everlasting peace, uh, sonship, born into, you're born into the family, you're adopted, you, you feel like you're a child of the Most High God, and you're beloved, and you really realize you, whose you are and who you are in Christ. And that all comes from knowing the Word of God, getting in the Word of God. Um, it is important. That's how you abide in the Lord. I want to read a scripture to you. Um, it is John 15, verse 4. It says, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he, he, is, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So, um, when we're abiding in the Lord, his will becomes our will, and our prayers become his prayers. The Spirit prays for us when we don't know what to pray utterances, and those are the prayers that God says amen to. 
Those are the prayers that God answers, the prayers that are in a line with His will. You know, we spend, um, a lot of us, and I used to do this, spend all this time praying this list of things that I wanted God to do that was my will. And then I would get mad at God for not answering those prayers when God knows what's best for me and He knew that if He answered those prayers, it would be to my demise. It would not be for my good. So, um, you know, that song that says, thank God for unanswered prayers, that, that never rang more true than what, what I'm talking about right now because it is true. Some prayers don't need to be answered. Some prayers, we don't know what we need. God knows what we need. God knows His His good and acceptable and perfect will. And the Holy Spirit, as we abide in the Spirit, God will bring that will um, into our heart and we will begin to walk out what God has called us to do, our purpose, what He created us for. You know, He created us all for such a time as this. He didn't create us to be in... Um, the olden days he created us to be in these times in these times of revival these are the times that God created you for for the times of revival for the times for you to get up get out there and share his gospel share his word share his love and realize that you are a beloved child of the most high God you know um, there are two two different pictures of the, the prodigal sons um, in the story of the prodigal. There's the brother that is out there. He's in lawlessness. He is breaking the law. He is living in sin. And then there's the brother that is striving, that is trying to um, do work to make God love him. Well, those are neither one the picture that we want to be. We want to be the brother that's in the house. And God is calling us all to the house right now. He's calling us all into his house. Um, to, to sit at his feet, the story of Mary and Martha, where Mary just did the needful thing. She was sitting at Jesus' feet. She broke through the barriers. She touched the heart of God. That is where few get, where you can gaze into his eyes and gaze into his presence and be in his presence um, and partner with God in his will. Um, instead of binge watching TV, we need to we need to fill up on the Word of God. And then that way, when we get five minutes into the Bible, we won't fall asleep. Um, we have no appetite for the Word of God because, and the real pleasure of God, the real truth, because we're filling up on junk. We're filling up on things of this world. And we need to um, get our appetites cleaned up. Get our appetites cleaned up. Fast those things. Fast those things that are coming in our eye gate. Fast those things that are coming in our ear gate. Fast those things that are coming in our mouth. So that our spirit man, so that our, our spiritual ears can hear. Our spiritual eyes can see. So that the Holy Spirit within us can wake up. You know, you are the throne room of God. You are the holy of holies inside of you. Say, when you wake up in the morning, say, Hold your stomach, say, good morning, Holy Spirit, because that is where the Holy Spirit is in your inner man. He is in you. And you need to awaken that and know that in yourself. You need to begin to come to a realization that that, that is the Holy Spirit that is in you. He is in you. And you'll ascend into the throne room and descend into the Spirit. And it's amazing, guys. It's amazing. So... We need to prepare our hearts for God's Word. We need to uh, break up the fallow ground. Break it up. You know, that old ground has weeds growing on it. It's hard. Our hearts are hard. We need to break it up. So we need to be, begin to pray for the Holy Spirit to give us a hunger and a thirst for His Word. Pray for those who persecute us. Bless those who, who hurt us. And those are God's ways that are higher than our ways. And that's whenever God will begin to say amen to our prayers. We want God to say amen to our prayers. We, we need to get pregnant with what God wants. Pregnant with His desires. And this comes through sacrifice, guys. This comes through sacrificing our own desires. This comes through sacrificing a, a sowing a seed to God. Um, regardless of wherever you want to sow it. But you're still sowing it to Almighty God. Um, this is where we have breakthrough, guys, in this area of sowing, in the area of sacrifice, in the area of 
letting go of our old desires for his desires. Um, <clears throat> when we seek the Lord, he rains righteousness upon us. He whispers grace to us. So whenever we're praying for those who persecute us, he gives us, he whispers grace for us to be able to forgive them. And then we come into love. We, we begin to have love for our brother once more. And it's so freeing to not be walking around in hate, not to be walking around in anger, <clears throat> not to be walking around in unforgiveness. Um, you know, I've heard it said, it's like drinking a cup of coffee and expecting the other person to wake up. Well, and it's like drinking a cup of poison and expecting the other person to die. It's literally hurting you, yourself. Whenever we won't forgive someone and God has forgiven us for a much higher debt, we are annulling the cross. We're annulling the cross and Satan is over there rubbing his hands together, so happy that we can't forgive. So Jesus told the parable of the man who owned, uh, who owed a small amount and he forgave, or the man who owed a large amount and the master forgave him for that amount. And then there was a man who came along and owed him a smaller amount and he threw him in jail. And that is what we're doing when we say we don't forgive someone. So we need to think of the worst thing we've ever done. Remember what God forgave us for and then forgive our brother and realize it's not him we're fighting against. It's a spirit that done God and our brother made our brother lie on us, made our brother be mean to us, made our brother do something that wasn't pleasing to us that hurt our feelings and um and just forgive them so we'll ascend into the throne room and then our spirit and the throne room are the same room and we'll realize we'll begin to realize that we are we have what the saints of old would would have loved to have we have the holy spirit within us in the days of old god was only um was only like in the days of old God was only with man and to man but now God is in man so listen that's what the cross of Calvary did God is in you has it dawned on you that you have God living on the inside of you you don't have the second cousin of God the second cousin of the Trinity or, or a little buzz you have the spirit of Almighty God the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead living on the inside of you that is the glory of the new covenant it used to be God with man God to man now it's God in man it's a it's a little bit of me and a lot of God doing his will it's given me new desires and the power to carry it out. When I am weak, he is strong. Colossians 1.27 says, This is the mystery which we preach to the Gentiles. It is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Wow. You know how I know Jesus is coming back? Because he has already made a down payment. And he don't put down earnest money on a house he's not going to buy. So God has put down his money. He has put his bold spirit in me to seal me for the day of redemption. And he wants to do that for all of us. He wants. He's not willing that any of us should perish. But he wants us all to come to the knowledge of Christ Jesus. And how do we do that? By abiding in his word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. <clears throat> John 1.1 1, 1. The Word is alive. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. This is the Spirit of Almighty God that is going to become alive in you through the Word of God. If you will seek Him like you seek your first love, if you will seek Him like you um, seek money, this is, a, this is why it's so important for you to tithe. The Bible says you cannot have two masters. If you love money, you will hate God. So, um, you have to tithe. It says, where your heart is there, your treasure will be also. So, whenever you tithe, it breaks you free of worrying about what you're going to do next, what you're going to get next. It takes that hole out of you, that hole that can't be filled. It's a God hole that only God can fill. 
and then you realize that your money is not even your money. It's God's money. And you begin to do what God wants you to do with that money. And it is an amazing freeing thing. Listen, it's not worth it to gain the whole world and lose your soul. It's really not. These are God's ways. Um, in Samuel, when David made the sacrifice and Gad was going to give him the, the sacrifice. And he said, no, let me pay for it. I'm not sacrificing anything to God I haven't paid for. So guys, listen, these are the ways God says in Isaiah 55, 8. <clears throat> my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So we need to become wise as serpents, harmless as doves, and begin to watch God's word <clears throat> to perform it. We've got to watch it to perform it. The angels hearken to it. God watches it to perform it. He keeps vigil over his word. So we too need to watch God's word to perform it. So don't just be hearers of the word. Be doers of the word. It is possible to know the word of God and not know God. Listen, you've got to walk it out. It cannot be faked. It cannot be tricked. You can't be one way behind closed doors in your house and be another way out in public. God is calling us to be in his house all the time. He is in us. Christ in you, the hope of glory is in you. And he wants you to partner with him and be the hands and feet of Jesus. And partner with him in your finances. <clears throat> partner with him in your life, partner with him in everything you do. Everything you do, he wants to be in everything. Um, we've got our Bibles, but, but does our Bibles got us? Um, when you know a verse, that's one thing, but does the verse know you? You need to get where that verse knows you because the word is alive. The word is alive. So, um, we are ascending into the break through, we are ascending and breaking through into heaven and breaking through into your spirit and your spirit is in you. And how do you do this? By abiding in the word of God. <clears throat> God wants to teach you to ascend into the throne room and Descend into your spirit and connect with the Holy Spirit in prayer, in a dialogue with God where he speaks to you, where he communes with you throughout the day. In Romans 8, um, 26, it talks about, it talks about, um, likewise, the spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray as we ought, but the spirit himself intercedes with us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts knows what is in the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. So we don't know what to pray. God's Spirit and he who searches the hearts, Jesus searches our hearts and prays for us what we do not know, know to pray in moanings and groanings. And this is Romans 8, 27. So we have our, our, our spiritual prayer language. Our, we fellowship into love, into delight, into pleasure with God throughout the day in communion with God all day. The saints of old did not have this before Calvary. We have Almighty God living on the inside of us. Um, and this is where God starts to say amen to our prayers. This is where we start to walk in a mighty exploits, doing exploits. Um, you know, I don't just want to try to start twist God's arm to get him to do what, what I want, things I want. I want to begin to have prayers that God says amen to. And God is only going to say amen to prayers that line up with his will. So get in, in line with God's will. Your desires will change. Your desires will change. He will give you new desires and he will give you the power to carry out those desires. And then you'll begin to ask him for the things that he wants. You'll begin to um, ask him for the things that he wants, and those are the things that he does, praise the Lord. Um, most of us are trying to get God into what we want, and then we get mad at God when he don't move, and it don't look like what we think. 
So the foundation of prayer is a life of learning how to receive from the Bible and the Holy Spirit. So we've got to learn how to receive from this, from this, and receive from the Holy Spirit. And this is where we learn to pray. This is where we learn to pray. And then those moanings and groanings, they are actually moanings and groanings that line up with the Word of God. And um, I know how passionate we can be for worship and our own ideas, but God wants us to be passionate for His Word like that. We, as we are for the most important thing in our lives, we need to be that passionate for the Word of God. You're only going to grow in the depth and the height that you love God's Word. That's all you're going to grow. So, it's God's desire that God and the Bible would become your first, your number one source of entertainment. So, it is my prayer that God and the Bible become your number one source of entertainment. There is nothing more anointed than the Bible. There is nothing more anointed. He sent His Word and He healed them all. We all want the manifestation of God without the Word of God. But it doesn't come without the Word, guys. The Word of God is where the anointing is. There is nothing more anointed than the Bible. We drink from so many other sources when we, when we get to the Bible that we fall asleep. So don't get tired. Don't get tired out drinking from other sources, filling up on junk, filling up on the junk of the world. And then when it comes to God's Word, you're over here falling asleep after five minutes. Don't do that. Be careful what you let in your eye gates. Be careful what you let in your ear gates. Be careful what you're speaking. Listen, don't wear yourself out on empty words. Don't do it. You're losing power in the Spirit. Every word goes out like fire. Every word, it goes out like fire. You have the authority with your words. God gave it to Adam and Eve in Genesis 126, and they gave it to Satan. Well, Jesus gave it back to you. So now you have the authority. So take authority with your words. God is going to trust you with more anointing and more fire as long as he sees that he can trust you guarding your words. Life and death are in the tongue. Those who love to talk will eat the fruits thereof. It's not what goes into the body that defiles the man. It's what comes out of his mouth. Um, a lot of times we're falling asleep um, because the Bible is telling us things that we don't want to hear, telling us to change. It's changing us. The Word is alive. It cuts between bone and marrow. And, and soul and spirit, and it, and it discerns the deep intentions and thoughts of the heart. So it's showing you who you are. It's like looking in the mirror. So a lot of times we don't want to change. We're not ready to change. But guys, I'm telling you, there's an urgency now. There's an urgency in my spirit. If you've seen the two preachers and seen what the, the earthquake in China, the flood in Mexico, and these are end time prophecies, the hell, and that hell is only like that big. Well, let me tell you, in Revelation, I think it's 16, the hell is 100 pounds heavy. I do not want to be here for that. I do not want to be here for that. Regardless, I don't know if I will be here for that. But I'm telling you, I do not want to be here for that. And I do not. I know that the only way that we're going to be able to get through this is having that spirit within us. God's spirit within us. The spirit helps in our weakness. 826. Romans 826. Awaken the groan within you. Awaken that groan, that spirit that prays what you don't know what to pray. You've got to have it. You have got to have it to get through. And this is what seals you. This is what the, the earnest down payment on, on the, the vessel, the house, that you are the temple of the Lord. Some of us think a new spouse, a new car, a new job, more money, and we run to everything else. We think all of that will fill us. But what we need is to be fully absorbed in God. That's what we need. The quicker we connect with our purpose... And the quicker that groan will be able to lock in and give us, we'll, we'll be able to fully give ourselves to that groan, to our, to our prayer language. And that's the prayers that God's going to say yes to. That's the prayers. And if, if not, we'll just keep buying into the lies of everything out here. Everything that keeps telling us it is, it's going to make us happy. 
that's going to make us happy. This is going to make us happy. No, God put a hole inside of you that only He can fill. God put a hole inside of you that only He can fill, hoping that you would come to the knowledge of Christ, hoping that you would give your life to Christ because He's not willing that any of us should perish, and His people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And these are the days of increased knowledge, so don't be destroyed for lack of knowledge. A new car, a new house, none of that. A new this, a new that. That is not, that is not what's going to be able to quench the longing that was made for God. There's a longing inside of us that can only be quenched by Almighty God. And the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses when we don't know what we should pray for. Um, God prays it for us through, through the Holy Spirit. Deep mysteries. Deep mysteries. However, the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us. He makes intercession with us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Jesus searches our hearts and knows what the mind of the Spirit is. So between Jesus' intercession and the Holy Spirit's intercession on the inside of us, Jesus makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. The Holy Spirit is in you. So put your hand on your belly and say, good evening, Holy Spirit. Good evening. Good morning, Holy Spirit. And, and start to make yourself more aware that you have that Holy Spirit within you. Um, do you have any idea how absolutely phenomenal the reality of the third person of the Trinity is now dwelling inside of you within your spirit? That is phenomenal. That is phenomenal. Has that even dawned on you? Has it even dawned on you? You have God on the inside of you. You don't have the second cousin or the third cousin or little buzz. You have the spirit of Almighty God on the inside of you partnering with you to help you do the will of God, to give you the desire to do the will of God and help you carry it out. So um, it's God in man. It's not God to man or with man. It's God in man. So now we have God inside of us, praise the Lord. Let that dawn on you. Get a grasp that. Grasp that. You know, Jesus is coming back because he's already made a down payment. And he doesn't put down uh, earnest down payments down, earnest money down on a house he's not going to buy. So um, know whose you are and know who you are. Your beloved identity. You are the beloved son or daughter of the Most High King. The Spirit breaks off orphan spirit, often off, off that you're an orphan. The Spirit breaks that off when you get the Holy Spirit. I was going down the hall and God told me, the Spirit told me, you're a daughter. You're adopted. And guys, that, that love that He flooded me with when He told me that, has carried me through the death of my dad. That love has carried me through many trials and many tribulations. Many. So, don't be like the younger son and the prodigal that is partnering with lawlessness. Don't be like the older son that is working so hard for Abba's approval. The father is calling the children into the house. It is time we begin to live out our beloved identity. The heavens opened on Jesus, and, and God said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. And the Holy Spirit is security in your in you, of your beloved identity. So, it goes on to say that Jesus gives the Spirit to the ones who love Him and obey His commands. I taught on this last week. That Spirit He gives to the ones who obey His commands says, if you love me, you'll do what I asked you to do, and then I'll, I'll, my, my Father will send His Spirit to you, and it will teach you and lead you into all things. So, it's only a little bit of me, and it's a lot of Jesus that's going to change the world. Only a little bit of me, but a lot of Jesus that's going to change the world. The Holy Spirit is your eternal roommate, the Spirit of Truth, when whom, whom the world cannot receive for you know him he dwells within you so you're going to be dialoguing with God and and pray the Bible back to Jesus 
back to God, bring him into remembrance of his word. This is very important for you, for yourself. And the Holy Spirit is invisible. The Holy Spirit just talks about Jesus to you all the time. The Holy Spirit is your wedding planner. You know, you're the bride and he's the bridegroom. Jesus is the bridegroom. He's coming back for a pure and spotless bride. So the Holy Spirit is your wedding planner. And, um, and it's, a, it's your intimate friend. It's your intimate friend. He's going to lead you and guide you into all truth. He's going to teach you how to do the will of God and, and give you the desire to carry it out. So guys, let us pray really quick. Father, I just pray right now that you open our eyes, Lord, that you open the eyes of our heart, that we can um, begin to do your will, that we will seek after you like we do our first love. I bind up any demonic power, any unclean spirit trying to come against the will of God for these saints' lives in the name of Jesus. Anything trying to block God in their lives, trying to stop them from doing their purpose. I bind you. I break your power now. The Lord rebukes you. I command you back to the pit in Jesus' mighty name. Loose God's saints now, his beloved children. Anything trying to block their identity in Christ must go in Jesus' name. Their inheritance is to be set free, delivered, and healed. I declare wholeness, nothing missing, nothing broken. I declare health. I declare peace like a river. I declare that out of their belly is going to flow rivers of living water, that the Holy Spirit lives and dwells within them, and they're going to begin to awaken the Spirit within them. In Jesus' mighty name. Love you guys. Like and share, and please join us on our lives on Tuesdays and Thursdays.